In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can utilize Microsoft Excel to sum a range of data conditionally. Let me set it up for you right here. Open in front of you, I've got an example file. It's a pretty simple example file. And for your reference, if you'd like to download it, follow along and practice what we're about to cover right here, head down to the description of this video, look for a link to the Office Noob blog, and you'll find a download where you can get this file right here. It's called some ifs versus some product hyphen zero one. You can download it and you can follow along with me and practice these concepts. And while you're down there, make sure if you like this video, you've learned something new, you give it a thumbs up and let me know you're enjoying it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about new videos that I post on this channel regularly. Take a look. So in the example file, we've got a simple little table. It's got, got about 800 records in it, but we've got values like the order ID, the customer ID, the order date, the shipper, and the freight. Now, the question that I've got that's really prompted the reason for this video is, I need to sum up a range of cells. For example, I need to sum up the freight, but I need to sum it up only where a specific value is true or specific values is true. So whether we're doing it with a single criteria or with multiple. In this example, I've got three functions that we're gonna take a quick peek at. We got the sum if, which is great. It's been around inside of Excel for a while now. This one allows you to sum up a range based off of a single criteria. The second one we have there is sum ifs. It's much like the sum if, but this one will allow you to sum up based on multiple criteria. And we've also got the sum product function. This one, much like sum if, has been around for a while inside of Excel. Sum ifs, a little bit newer inside of the realm of Excel. But we're gonna take a look at an example of all three of them and we'll see advantages and potential disadvantages of utilizing each of them for a scenario like this. Well, the bigger picture that I want to get out of here is I want to sum up the freight column where shipper is equal to one of these three values here, speedy, united, or federal shipping. On top of that, I only want to, want to sum up the freight where the order date took place on a weekday, not a weekend. I don't want to include the Saturday, Sunday sales in this calculation. Only Monday through Friday sales. That's it. So how can we do that? Well, first, let's take a look at sum if. Remember, sum if is only going to allow for a single criteria. So this will be a quick one. Here, side of cell H2, I'll say equals sum if, open up a parentheses, and as you can see, there is three arguments, three pieces of information that the function needs in order to perform its role or its job. So the first thing is the range. In our case, the range is gonna be the D2 to D831. That's the range that we wanna look for, and specifically, we wanna look for a specific shipper. Now you see my range there, D2 to 831. I do wanna make that an absolute. So I'll throw in the F4 function key. That'll bring in the dollar symbols and make that an absolute reference. All right, so that's the range. Comma, now we got the criteria. I want it to find H1 or Speedy Express. Comma again. Last thing it wants to know is the sum range. Well, what range do you want to sum when it finds that this is true? In our case, E2 to E831. Let's do F4 to bring in the dollar signs. I'm gonna close the parentheses. We're done with that function. I'll hit my enter key and there's my results. Just copy that over, get it for each of the different shippers. That's great, but it was a single criteria. In this case, it's summing up the freight based on if the shipper is one of these three, but it's including every single order regardless of the date. The question that I got was, we need to look for a specific shipper and I only want to do the work days. I don't want to include the Saturday, Sunday sales. All right, 
Well, in steps the sum ifs function. You're going to see that this is very similar to the sum if. The advantage here is we have the ifs. We can do multiple criteria if this is true and if this is true and so on. So I'll bring in equals sum ifs. Oops, sum ifs. And we can see here it's got the sum range. It's got a criteria range one and a criteria one and then a dot dot dot. Well, the dot 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 denotes that there's additional criteria that we can add. Well, in order for this one to really truly work for me, we need the order date, but we need the day of the week, not the complete date. We just need to know if this is a Monday through Friday or if this is a Saturday, Sunday date. That's what I need to get out of this. Well, with the sum ifs in play, I'm gonna create a new column here, use the weekday function, that'll extract out what day of the week this date falls on. So here, I'm gonna click on the column D, I'll right click and I'm gonna insert, that'll give me a new column there, and I'm just gonna call this week day. All right, so now here, inside of cell D2, I'm gonna bring in the weekday function. It wants to know two things, the serial number or the date and the return type. So for the serial number, I'll grab cell C2, comma. The return type, this essentially helps us to uh, denote what the week starts on, what day of the week it starts on. Does it start on a Monday? Does it start on a Sunday? And where does it end? So you see here, if I use a number one, numbers one would be a Sunday through seven would be a Saturday. If I do a number two, then Monday becomes a number one, and Sunday becomes the seven value. So you'll see why here in a moment as we start to create our sum ifs function, but I'm gonna put a number two in here. So Sunday becomes a seven, which means Saturday would be a six, Friday would be a five, and so on. Monday would be number one, our week would start on Monday. Now this is again gonna make our criteria section much easier to work with. I'm gonna close that parentheses, hit my enter key. Now it formatted it in properly. It just copied the date format from the C column. We'll fix that. I'm gonna to go to D2. I'm gonna double click the autofill handle, that little box, get the fill all the way down for us. And now with that selected, I'll go to my date. This is on my home tab. Go a little drop down, I'll change that to general. Now we got a nice little number in there. Remember the number one was Monday, the number six was a Saturday, one was Monday, seven was a Sunday, and so on. So now we can use that, that numeric value, as part of our criteria. So now I'll hop over to cell I3. I'm gonna say equals sum ifs. Open up my parentheses. First thing it wants to know is what range do you wanna sum? So I'll grab F2 to F831. I'll throw in the dollar symbols, make that an absolute. I'm gonna do a comma. The next thing I want to know, what's your first criteria range? So in our case, we'll grab E2 to E831, dollar signs once again, F4, comma. Next thing I want to know, well, what's the criteria one for that criteria range one? Criteria one is gonna be I2, no, I1, excuse me, which is the Speedy Express, okay. That's our first set of criteria. That's like the sum if. Well, sum ifs, if I now do comma again, it'll bring in a criteria range two and criteria two. So for our second criteria range, I'm gonna grab D2 to D831, make that an absolute, comma. And the next thing it wants to know is criteria for that range. Well, in our case, we wanna make sure that the value is less than six. Remember, one through five is Monday through Friday. So if it's less than six, it should be one of those values, right? So here, inside of quotes, I'll open a quote, I'm gonna do less than six, then I'll close that quote, and I'll close the parentheses for the function. We're done. We've got the range we're gonna sum, our first set of criteria, and then our second set of criteria for this function. I'll hit my enter key, and there's my results. Whoop. 
And as you can see, if we compare, they are different values between each of the shipping suppliers because this value here is not including the Saturday, Sunday sales. All right, some if, some ifs. Now there's one more I wanna show off here. Now I'm showing this one off really because of this column right here. This is great, the weekday function, but it's something additional that we had to create and include it inside of our list. Well, what if I don't wanna do that? I, I, don't, I don't want an additional column out here. I just want the function to figure out what the day of the week is. I wanna build this, I want, essentially I wanna build the weekday inside of the calculation, not reference an additional column. This is something small, but it gives you the flexibility. So in steps, the sum product function. You can see it's, it's, this is gonna be pretty similar with the slight twist. So here, I'll bring in equals sum product, open up the parentheses, and this one's got some arguments, but they're just called arrays. Arrays, arrays, arrays. The, the arrays are gonna be one of two things. It's gonna be the range and criteria that you're looking for, and it's gonna be the range that you want to eventually sum up. So remember, we have two sets of criteria. So first I'm gonna specify my first one for the shipper. So once I have some product open parentheses, I'm then gonna open up another parentheses because I'm gonna set up the first criteria. So inside of that one, I'll go grab E2 to E831, again, make that an absolute, F4. And we wanna say if that is equal to I1. And I'm gonna close the parentheses. That's the first set of criteria. Then I'm gonna do an asterisk. And now the asterisk allows us to create an and condition or and criteria. Remember, we got two criteria, the shipper and the order date. And these, both of these, the shipper and the order date should be true, it should be an and. If this is true and this is true, that's where the asterisk comes into play. It creates that and condition. So now after the asterisk, I'll open up another parentheses because I'm now gonna specify the second criteria. So here, I need to reference the order date. But remember, I need to get the weekday out of it. But I don't wanna, I don't wanna reference this column. So within the function itself, I'm gonna bring in workday, workday, the, or excuse me, the weekday, not workday, weekday. I'll open up the parentheses, serial numbers first. So I'll grab this range right here, C2 to C831, and I'm gonna make that an absolute F4. And then I got need to specify how the days are interpreted. So I'll do a comma, I'm gonna use the number two just like we did before. Remember Saturday, Sunday, six and seven, one through five, Monday through Friday. I'll close that parentheses and I'm gonna say as long as that is less than six and I'll close that parentheses again for that criteria. Then I'm gonna do one more comma and this will be the array or range that we want to ultimately sum up. In this case, it's gonna be F2 to F831. Now, I think there's one thing that I've missed here, but we'll see something and we'll come back to it. I'm gonna close the parentheses because I'm done with that function. Now I'm gonna hit my enter key. Oh, but actually, but no, I didn't miss nothing, we're good. <laughs> All right, so there's my results, just like the sum ifs. Now I can copy that over. They all look right. Those duplicate up. These ones up here are different because they don't include or they include the weekends. But it, same results that we got with the sum ifs. But here we're including the weekday within the calculation itself, not as a separate column. So even if D went away, if I completely deleted that column, boop, gone. Sum ifs will break, but some product still working, still awesome like it is. So three different functions in there, some if single criteria, some ifs, multiple criteria, and the sum product, multiple criteria with a slight twist, just a little bit different way of doing it, but getting the same results 
and perhaps a little more flexible for you. So make sure you try these out, practice them, make sure you download the file, give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new, and subscribe so you get updates to future lectures that I drop on YouTube. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.